welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Uh, my name is Wendy and today I am sharing another installment in my art review videos. Um, if you are new here or if you haven't seen before, I have done one of these videos before where I reviewed um, the work that I did like way early on in high school and whatnot in the early aughts. Um, that video I shall link up here if you would like to go check it out. Um, but this time I'm skipping ahead a few years to between the years of 2011 or 12 until about um, 2017 or so. And I'm going to just call these my middle years because I don't, they're just sort of in the middle <laughs> of my early years and what I'm kind of doing now. Between the years where I left off in that last video and up till this point, I hadn't really been doing a whole lot of like art. I had just gotten out of graphic design school in, um, back in like 2006. And so I was working a lot on um, digital artwork and graphic design and really learning everything I could do about that. And like literally I'd work all day in a print shop, I'd go home and I was watching more videos on how to do stuff in Illustrator and how to do stuff on InDesign. I was kind of obsessed for a while. So by 2011, 2012, somewhere in there, I had been doing the design at the print shop for about seven years and was getting really bored, honestly, um, with the monotony of it. So I started to need to fill that itch for creativity again. So I got back into drawing and um, pulled out my colored pencils and uh, yeah, the following is sort of what I got up to over the next few years after that. I was still very influenced by tattoo designs. So uh, a lot of what you'll see um, in this is sort of tattoo-esque um, and some of them I think are still pretty cool. But anyways, yeah, this is what I got up to. I um, hope you enjoy. So this first little chunk here, they're just, I had this little, um, little square sketchbook with this paper and I was going to fill the whole thing with these little designs and, uh, these are all colored pencil and I think probably like a, a pig, pigma pen or something to outline them. But, uh, yeah, I just sit and I had a lot of fun with these and most of these are probably like, I was probably researching online, like traditional or neo-traditional tattoos to get ideas of patterns and designs and stuff like that and maybe using my own colors my own layout I liked this one and tried to do it in watercolor and then I was going to do this series of uh, black and whites I had these frames eight frames uh, that I was going to make eight of these little black and white ink illustrations and and hang them in a grid uh, I made two <laughs> out of the eight. That's as far as that ever went. I, yeah, uh, I did try one with color to see if I liked it better. It's also nice. I just, the aesthetic of having a bunch of black and white ones in these like black frames, it was really awesome looking. Too bad I didn't finish it. Uh, I also around this time got interested in Copic markers. So if you've seen any of my swatching videos, you will have seen me swatching out Copics and they are from this time period because I was experimenting with them, looking for different ways to get these uh, blended tattoo sort of designs in a, in a different medium other than colored pencil. It was before I'd really picked up watercolors. Uh, this one actually, I have since redone this, and maybe I'll pop a little preview up. I've redone this one digitally and turned it into a bunch of designs uh, available as like stickers on my Etsy shop and, and other places. I also around this time had this sketchbook where, let me just zoom out here. I visited some of the stuff that I did earlier, like this one was out of my, I think probably around the 2005 era, and I wanted to make it look a little nicer, so I just... There, there's some of these you'll, you'll you may if you've seen the other video recognize these sketches but this whole thing is just filled with um, my tracing paper sketches of things because I would do initial sketches and then I would trace things to transfer on to uh, a nicer piece of paper to do the final artwork um, I revisited my koi to try to get the, pr the proportions better I didn't really do too much other than I did do a digital version But yeah, this whole book is just filled with all of these um, little sketches and stuff that I did on scraps of paper or tracing paper. 
Um, some of them were out of my old high school book that I thought, hmm, I wonder if I can redo that in a nice way. These ones here were, I was practicing doing line work with an ink pen. Or iterations like this one here. Um, I showed this in my last art review video, this particular design. This is actually three of them. But this was, I'd trace over it and practice different iterations to see what, if I like to change things up a little bit. There's some of my black and whites there. More Copic. Copic. I still want to kind of do something with this. Swallows and peonies and blossoms. Every now and then I look at it and think to do something, but I just haven't actually bit the bullet and done anything with it. These little motif designs are really fun and relaxing to make. These actually are from like 2000. 15, I think, but I just threw them in here so I wouldn't lose them and I was doing a series of uh, Christmas themed tattoo designs for some Christmas cards for some co-workers of mine at the time. Can't really see this but it's just my one of my first drafts of this sketch here um, which has also now been digitized. That's very nice. I want to do something with this too, because I, I really like this, but I haven't actually decided if I want to do a lino print or I don't, I don't know, but I want to do something with that one. And that's it for my sketches that I kept. And I think around this time I was thinking I really wanted to get back into like, I wanted to do real, real art. And I was doing a lot of tattoo designs, but knew I wasn't going to be a tattoo artist. <laughs> um, or at least I didn't think I was going to be a tattoo artist because I don't like needles. Even though I've gotten a couple tattoos myself, I just can't watch them being put on me. <laughs> and so I thought maybe that would probably not be the path, best path for me. So after going through all of those tattoo designs, I decided I wanted to get better at real traditional art. And so I decided to take a couple of small art classes at this little um, local, I guess, art school. It's not like a big accredited thing. It's just a little neighborhood art school. And they had classes for kids, some classes for adults, that kind of thing. And so I went and took a couple of courses there um, and did some, this is, I started practicing actually drawing again with a pencil and getting my tonal values and proportions and stuff like that and um, I think it was while I was doing these mannequins that I thought I needed to go horrible drawings of my dog um, I, that I needed to go to an art school or wanted to go to an art school anyways and uh, so yeah this is this is one of the still lifes from that art class that I did um, here's another one, it's just some fabric, we were practicing folded fabric because it's fun to get the, the tones and textures and stuff. Um, and I did a portrait class with them and um, I wish I had the, I think I might, I don't know, I hope I have somewhere the notes from this class because it, it was really good, it was really good and it really helped me, um, it really, the math, the formula that he gave me <laughs> for faces really helped with proportions and stuff. Um, so I hope I have those notes in there somewhere. Uh, this next section is for my next group of art, so you'll see those later. But uh, yeah, so that was around the art class time. And then also, as well as portrait, I did some watercolor with that, that school. And um, one of the practices was to do these abstracts. And as you can see by these, I am not an abstract artist. They were fun nonetheless. Um, this one here, I could almost consider it to be a decent abstract piece because I can actually see a composition in this. I imagine, I imagine a sea, and here's the horizon line way up here. So this is all water, and we've got like a, a bit of land or an island jutting out here, and another little, maybe a land with some trees and stuff on it. And then you get the foregrounds so of some big bushes and trees and stuff right up in your foreground that you're peering through at all of this. That's what I see when I look at it anyways. Uh, but yeah, that's the closest I've ever done to like <laughs> abstract. And uh, another one that we did was this apple. Apple's not bad. The shadow is horrendous. <laughs> And uh, these cherry blossoms, which uh, I didn't feel they were finished, but now I, I don't know. 
I'm kind of okay with it now. It's just sort of soft and flowy. So that was uh, 2012 and 2011. And after these classes, I decided to, this, well, it was around this time that I had decided to invest in some proper watercolors and started to experiment more with them. So I started to play around with watercolors and I started with things like this um, painting here uh, and another one which I don't I don't know where the original is but I, I do have a, a shot of it I'll pop it up on screen and um, this is just playing around this is on really really cheap paper this was done with really cheap watercolors but I was enjoying the idea of actually this is actually not too dissimilar from back in the mid 2000s where I was trying to mix the sort of softness and grace of a natural beauty with like a gritty grungy background um, and uh, yeah like I said this is like 2012 or so and grunge was a pretty big uh, design aesthetic at the time and so I was playing around with different ones like that this other one here that uh, I didn't finish uh, again another common thread of mine a common common theme not finished series and not finished paintings and not finished sketchbooks and um, from here I decided I think I didn't finish with this one because I got distracted and moved up inside in size and I don't have that original one so I'll pop it up on the screen and this one I actually painted for a not a competition it was like a giveaway but uh, this was the piece anyways that I had painted for that and was one and is living somewhere else in the world right now. And then I wanted to do a whole bunch of those really big ones. And uh, so then I did this one, which is, this is gonna be, again, too big. This is 18 by 24. It's gonna be too big for this camera. So I will pop it up on screen. But I did this one and I was really happy with this one. Maybe because I actually finished it. <laughs> which was something I hadn't been good at thus far. Uh, also, I liked the colors that I chose and it was sort of the aesthetic that I was aiming for. And this is where I was going to go for a while with my style. And um, this is basically as far as this style really ever went. But um, it was fun while I was doing it. Move this out of the way. And then there was this other failed <laughs> series. So what are we at now? Like four failed series? Series? Um, I was going to do a bunch of illustrations with just black and red ink. And it was around Christmas time. So I was looking at Christmassy wintry designs and I came up with this one. And this brownish yellowy stuff that you see here is actually, um, let's see if I can get it. Uh, it's actually old dried up masking fluid. So masking fluid, you usually put it on your paper, you let it dry, you paint your watercolor, you rub it off, and then wherever the masking fluid was is still white. The white paper is still there. And I started this drawing with the idea that these little white snowflakes would be popping out from my grungy background. Um, I got sidetracked or distracted somehow, put this aside, and by the time I came back to it, it the... Um, the masking fluid it's, it was like it's completely stuck on there and I don't know if it's because this is a very it's a hot pressed paper it might even actually be a Bristol paper but it's super smooth so that might be why it never came off again but I couldn't get it to come off but uh, I don't know why I still have this maybe I thought I was going to try it again or redo it also coming out of that little art school stuff or art school um, after the portrait class, I did do a couple of portraits and I don't have those originals anymore because they were gifts, but I'll pop them up on screen. And there was two portraits of my niece and one portrait of my son. Uh, and I was very proud of these. They took me forever. I'd have to say each portrait probably was around 13 to 14 hours each. And I have not done a detailed portrait like that since. But yeah, that was my 2011, 2012 chunk of my art life. 
in 2013, I started to do a new graphic design job again. So I kind of fell back out of art for a couple of years because I was really trying to dedicate myself to that. So yeah, after that, we jump ahead again a couple of years and I didn't get back into it again until 2015. So now I am at about 2015. And by this point in time, um, I've been at my current design job for a couple of years. I'm a little more settled in. Um, and once again, I'm getting that art itch that uh, I need to be more creative and do my own thing. So uh, we've seen this book before. It's the same as the last one, but uh, this is the next half of that book. So, <clears throat> so out came my experiments with my tattoo designs again. Um, these were just, uh, I think this background, I did this background with coffee. It's like coffee and ink, I think ink I think and then this would have been I think this is watercolor and ink very old school roses it's another one with the coffee in the background I think I redid it because I didn't I didn't particularly like the pink so I redid it with just the two colors the gold and the teal and I really liked it um, and yeah just more sketchbooking work I feel like I'm missing something. I am. I am missing something. And I'm not sure why I was so obsessed with the tattoo designs. I think just, I mean, they're kind of fun and relaxing to draw, right? And I was really focused on trying to get my curves nice and my lines nice. And this here, the company that I worked for at this time, the group of the creatives, we decided to try to do a group project where we were going to um, design some playing cards. And the inspiration from this came from Playing Arts. I don't know if you've heard of them, but they have uh, kick-started a lot of um, decks of cards where each card is illustrated by a different artist and I have backed almost all of them. Uh, I haven't backed the digital one because I prefer, <laughs> I just prefer having a physical card in my hand. Anyways, uh, that was the inspiration. So we, we split the team, the deck of cards up between the team and we started working out some ideas and stuff. So this was um, some of my ideas for one of them, which um, we saw the sketch for this already. I, uh, I I put the sketch into that book, the other book I had with all of the flash drawings and stuff in it. Um, yeah, just more working out ideas. This one I have with me here, you'll see it in a moment. These are just more little tattoo ideas. Uh, I think I, I talked about my black and whites that I wanted to do eight of, and I only did two. This was my planning for that. This was another project that we did um, at the company I worked for. I will explain that a bit when we get to it. More peonies. And then, oh yeah, <laughs> and I also decided I wanted to do my own Kickstarter and it was going to be my own deck of illustrated cards. Um, and so this was my planning, my couple of sheets of planning on the things I would need to consider, um, rewards, things like that. So just, I started to plan it, um, spoiler alert, never happened, but I started planning it. I clearly draw, like drawing flowers a lot. I like this design too, I should do something with this. Actually, this one too. I like this one too. Maybe some stickers or decals or something. I have redone this uh, recently. I was planning out my art studio when it was in the dining room at my old place. And I have no idea. Some more little design ideas. Oh, these were my design ideas. I did, sh I did show uh, in that flash book I had with all, all the images on tracing paper. These were my initial sketches for one that I had that I said I, I really liked and wanted to do something with. These were my initial thinking about it plans for that. That's it for that book. And then 
Uh, where are we here? Just planning for some advertisements for the company I was working for, but I'm back into the art. No idea. Probably planning for work. A random chair. I love these chairs. I would like to have one someday. These are planning again for... So the company I worked for at the time of this, we did marketing advertising for uh, auto sales. So I would often pull this out just to scribble down some ideas. And that's just some contour drawings. I have a book called Art Before Breakfast and the group of us, we were, we were going to do, um, I guess like a book club, but like art related. And so this one that we were going to do is called Art Before Breakfast and we were all going to work through it together. And it didn't happen, but these were my first couple of sketches for that. More planning for designs. Planning for cards. And then, <laughs> so this has actually jumped ahead to 2017. I was gonna do sketchbook summer, uh, which is a, a summer of sketchbooking. I don't even remember now, but this is as much as I did. So yeah. So with that same company, um, back to the illustrated cards project, I did have a couple of different designs. Um, I had this one here, which I did for a three of clubs design. Uh, I think I might still have the digital mock-up of this. If I do, I'll pop it up. But I, I recently, a few months ago, just lost my hard drive died and I lost a lot of files. So I don't know if I still have it. If I do, I will pop it up. And this one here I did for the seven of diamonds. I've digitized this one too since. And then there's a couple others that I think I have. Uh, there was the, I think the nine of diamonds, some other one, which now I just, I have digitized it and um, turned it into a design uh, that is on stickers and pins and phone cases and stuff. Um, but that's digital, so that'll have to be up on the screen. And that this one I actually um, I don't hate, but I always wanted to redo it because it felt, didn't feel organic and natural enough. And I wanted it to feel more organic and natural. I think that's all the designs I did for that project. Um, and then the other thing I did while working for that company, we had a creative director come in and he wanted to see just sort of what we would do if we weren't at work and um, so this varied between all of us we were all very different personalities some people went home and did some packaging some people um, I think somebody designed like user interface designs I went home and did a painting because because why not and I did it a painting of this car because um, two reasons one because we were a company that did marketing for auto sales and two because I love classic cars I love going to the old car shows and there's something about the old cars with their illogical funny curves and stuff like that and the, the over <laughs> excessive use of chrome and the um, you know all the ornateness of them that I just I really love and I had taken a few pictures of different parts of these cars close up and so I chose this one here which I think is a mid 1930s Pontiac pickup of some sort. And this is the front grill area of it. Um, and this one was, was quite popular. I haven't done anything with this. Maybe I should uh, scan it in and uh, make some prints or frame the original and sell it. I'm not sure, but I still have this one because I, I liked it. I was quiet for a few months. I'm not really sure why, but near the end of 2016, I wanted to get back into it. So I decided to join my first ever Inktober and, and I didn't get all the way through it but um, here are my Inktober drawings and they were drawn with Copic markers which is an alcohol ink marker. I, I don't remember what the prompt words for these were. I like that one. Probably the worst skull ever drawn. I think I originally I was gonna redo this and make this look nicer too because I kind of like the idea of it again very tattooy. I think that the prompt word for this was rock. <laughs> I mean 
it's technically a rock. And this was the last day of that challenge. So I made it nine days in Inktober 2016. Uh, that prompt word was broken. I remember that. So that's my broken pencil. And I don't know, a couple of random thumbnails. Okay, and then this stuff here is just some scribbling and ideas that I, I used um, in an illustration course, which is coming up in a future video. But that was all I have found from 2016. So I don't know if I just didn't do anything else in 2016 or if I just don't have it anymore. So coming out of 2016, in the spring of 2017, I really started to want to get back into watercolors again. So I got this watercolor sketchbook, which is by Strathmore. And uh, the pages are pretty good. They're not really double-sided, like you can work on both sides, but one side has a nice texture and the other side has a horrible texture I hate. <laughs> Anyways, um, this was a, a trip that Troy and I took out to Squamish, uh, which is a town in British Columbia in the mountains up north. And well, I mean, I say up north, but I'm, I'm way down more south now in, uh, in the Okanagan. But this was our favorite place to go, this little, um, beach area that looked over this dock and um, that you could see the mountains and it was a very common place it didn't actually have sailboats but it would usually have um, what are they called parasailers where they're on their their surfboards and stuff like that but they have a, a parachute type of thing this bay is very very popular for having that in there but anyway I sat down on the beach and, and did this and then later I got into just playing and experimenting with watercolors and um, not sure what's going on here but yeah I just started playing with them I just got them out I just random mixes random shapes random colors literally just playing because I wanted to make something but I had no idea what to make so I thought this might be a uh, um, the words I'm looking for. This might be a good way to do it, just to sit down and mindlessly make these bright colorful shapes. I did get a little carried away with this um, because this sketchbook is not all of those that I did. And then I tried to do some little landscapes in watercolor and some more textures. Sketching a pony probably from I have no idea where. That was it in there but yeah when I say I got carried away with the watercolor experiments. I'm not exaggerating. I have a stack, a ton of these watercolor, this first ones here are all the like gradient practice, obviously, as you can see. Um, but then yeah, just shapes, colors, shapes, like so many, just, I have, I have so many of these that I have no idea what to do with. Some of them are nice, some of them are horrible. <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe I'll cut them up and make some greeting cards out of them, or I'm not sure. There's a couple I've scanned in to make some patterns out of, which um, I've put up on my pod shops as repeating patterns, but I have a lot of these things. As you can see, ooh, that one's bright. I was probably using aqua pink in that one. I think somewhere I had somewhere I was experimenting with metallics too. Yeah, right there, that one's got metallics. But yeah, so if you have any ideas of what a person might do with a ton of, well, this random stuff, let me know because I'm still at a loss for what to do with them. I don't really want to just toss them out. And then I thought I should be trying to make something look a little bit more artistic, but still I was in the whole just easy, simple, random, abstracty sort of vibes of it all. So I just started with simple things like this, and some of these are hideous. But I did a few of those. And then I did this one, and I actually kind of like this one. 
each one looks like almost like a little landscape like this is land and then these are trees that are popping up or something and I just did these by um, this part here I would paint solid with watercolor and then this part here I'd paint with just clear water and then just ever so slightly every now and then touch the two together with water allowing the paint to flow into the clear water beside it I think it looks kind of cool um, I tried experimented with a couple where I've um, stuck them to panel 2017 in the fall I decided to try Inktober again so here we go and this one here I was going to do a tattoo design for every word and then put the word in the banner because a lot of tattoos have banners that was my plan for this one divided so this one here I've actually turned digital and turned it into a sticker in my shop it says so corny on it This one too, I've also redone digitally and it now says drink me. I wanna do something with this one. I think it's not that bad of a design. I don't know what the word was. I clearly thought this one didn't need a banner. This one's so horrible. Clearly I am not a weapon illustrator. Crooked. I've uh, actually redone this one too digitally and it now says which please on it. And this one here, this gigantic, um, I have also turned this one digital. It is a decal that you can buy on my Etsy shop and I really liked the contrast of this so I tried to figure out how to make it just black and white with no gray shading and it no longer says gigantic because the word for this prompt was actually gigant obviously gigantic but it doesn't make sense as a, a decal that somebody might put on the car but it now says dead inside and it was just kind of like a quirky little sarcastic humor thing that I that I thought and it turned out to be my most popular design I, I did not expect it at all but of all the designs I have sold in my Etsy shop this is the one I've you know sold the most of and have to keep restocking. Um, so you have a pleasant little surprise. And then that is it for the 2017. But I am going to throw up um, this one here. Now this one's huge. Um, this tulip painting. I am putting this in here because I can't actually remember when I started this, but this has been an ongoing for many, many years image. <laughs> it started as um, a joint painting with my partner and I. Years and years and years ago in Vancouver, British Columbia, there was a shop called Raw Canvas. And it was like um, a social house, I guess. Like they had a wine and coffee bar. And then in the back they had paint like you could set like places for easels and all the paint you needed and you could just set up and paint so we went there with some friends and we bought this big canvas and some drinks and Troy and I started painting and I felt so awkward and embarrassed because people were watching me and could see what I was going to do and the pressure was immense and we painted like I think a branch with some cherry blossoms or something like that on it and that was as far as that got and then it sat in my closet for a couple of years and I pulled it out and started painting on it something similar to what it is now didn't like it repainted over it again and now it's at this stage and it's almost done <laughs> I'd say it about 90% done uh, I'm not happy with it it feels too again stiff like so many of my other things I think I'm going to do a final coat of oils over top of this this is currently acrylic and um, see what I can't do with some texture and some expressive strokes and stuff to try to finish it off but it's it's big it's like three feet by four feet it's a big big canvas and by far the biggest thing I've ever attempted to do so that was what I was up to at that point in time in my life and uh, I hope you enjoyed looking at all the stuff I did I had fun looking at those things and sort of um, remembering what I was up to and what I had in mind at the time some of them kind of inspire me to pick up some of the things again like like the ideas of making a series and then I just always had and still I guess have had the bad habit of dropping that because I get interested in something else I really just have to stick with it and get some series of well anything a series of anything out so that is something that I definitely want to integrate in my um, my art journey going forwards so I really do still enjoy tattoo designs and the artwork of tattoo artists 
I still really love to look at it and you can still see that influence a lot in my digital work particularly um, like my sticker designs I always get sort of tattooy about them uh, but I'm still feeling the urge to get more painterly with my artwork and actually make paintings as well as um, hand-drawn illustrations and I still feel like when it comes to digital art I still always head back in that sort of clean bold line um, aesthetic of art and I don't know how to shake it I don't know if I should shake it it's one of those things that I feel like it's a style that I really like and enjoy and do do sometimes but that doesn't fit with the stuff I want to do like the more painterly stuff I always have this inner sort of conflict on what I should or shouldn't do like if I want to be like a real artist should I stop doing those tattooy sort of designs and just focus on hand-drawn illustrations and paintings or can I still let myself do that kind of stuff um, is it confusing to a potential consumer of my artwork I don't know these are still questions that I have in my mind and I'm still working through them but Anyways, um, I really hope that you enjoyed taking a look at that artwork with me and I will be doing another couple in the future. The next one I think is going to be centered around my illustration course that I did and the years the work that I did during that. And other than that, I uh, hope you have a great day. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you like the content, please consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.